Hey everybody, uh, today we have another TWR 1693 made by Optima. Uh, this was a really good projector in its day. It is just barely pre-HDMI. HDMI was pretty much standard. Oh, a couple models after this one, maybe even a couple years, not maybe a year or two after this one. This was made in 2008, um, but they're nice projectors. I actually have one and really enjoy it. Uh, I use a DVI connector on mine. Now this one is here because the complaint says that the image is majority magenta, which is weird. Uh, usually you don't see that on an L or a DLP. Usually that's more of an LCD issue where you have a predominant color. That makes me think that there's either a synchronization problem with the color wheel or the color wheel itself is bad. Uh, one thing I noticed is the projector does need some routine maintenance. It's a little dusty. You can kind of see on the buttons. Just, you know, and it's just general, I see dust in the corners. Um, it kind of smells like a uh, wood stove a little bit, so it probably, probably has an issue with the color wheel sensor. Dust buildup is always my go-to because that would be a common uh, expectation for, a, you know, for an 11-year-old projector that's probably never been cleaned internally, which is fine, you know. Not everybody knows to do that. So anyway, first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to hook it up and verify that it has an issue. You can hear glass in it. Uh, maybe I should get that out first. You know what? I'm actually going to skip checking the issue because I have pictures. Um, I was only going to start it up to show you guys because I have pictures the customer sent me and what I'll do is I'll insert those pictures here. And then you can see, see it's all uh, magenta around where it should be black. So we'll figure it out. So anyway, before we even go there, I want to get that glass out. So to do that, these little things do a quarter turn, they unlock, and then that door flips up. Now you can pop these circlips off and then remove the door, but it's kind of more of a hassle than it's worth. Then, let's pop these guys out. And those are all slotted. There we are. And let's see how the lamp has fared. He's had this lamp, I don't know, a week, two weeks before he sent it in. You can see the lamp has the uh, proper IR cut coating, that reddish blue. Remember, if you ever see green when you do that, and it's a DLP projector, the lamp is no good. Oh, those are the screws making that noise. All right, so we'll set that over there. Let's see, let's get you guys a view of the color wheel. All right, you can see the color wheel in there. I mean, we're going to spin it just to make sure all the segments are there. Make sure it didn't get too hot and throw a segment out of it. Doesn't look like it. It actually feels pretty good. So I think the color wheel is probably okay. I have we're just going to find a lot of crud. Let's see if anything dumps out when I do this. See, that's all deep inside. So we're going to need to get the rest of, oh, there we go. All right, we're gonna need to get the rest of that debris investigated. So my guess is they had a lamp explode at one point. So let's get the top off now. So you know, there's actually 
a ring or a, I don't know, square frame around that's going to have to come off. So first thing, let's get these out. And this is why sometimes you take the door off to get to these, but you just slide the door over and that's fine. So once those two are out, this ring will start to come off. Alright, so let's get ready. Let me get the spudger in here. When it gets a little tricky at this part, you kind of have to uh, lift and slide and just kind of work around the door. I find if you turn it a little, that's good. So then this is out of the way. Let me set that there. And then you can see there are a handful of screws left. One, two. I think it's everything marked with the C. And they're all Phillips, so it's, let's see, we have two flat tops. And then some long coarse threads. And one short machine thread. The more I open, the more I see what looks like this thing's just going to probably be kind of dusty. Oh, uh, and then I remember these two. Let me do it sideways so you guys can see. And these are a long machine thread. remember I've taken these apart before I had to clean one I have one all right and then we can lift it up and there's a keyboard cable yep right here plug that and then uh, speaker okay, you can see this lamp ran really hot or a lamp ran really hot I'll bet you an old lamp exploded Set that off to the side and see if any glass falls out. I don't see any obvious debris yet. I did hear it. But I do see things that little mark right there looks like a piece of hot quartz probably landed there. So let's see what falls out. Oh. Yep. Two pieces fell out, but one was really small. This one, this is actually part of the uh, globe of the burner, the arc tube. That's the outside right there. And the inside, you can see where piece of the um, strip that runs down the uh, middle goes oh and the other one fell in here okay oh and there's the one that's hard to see ah, too small but here's the other piece that I found so yeah he had a arc tube explode all right 
So, do I even need to take the color wheel out? Let's see. Let's make sure the color wheel has its index mark, which it does. Good. That didn't overheat and fall off. Everything else seems all right. I think what I'm going to do is hit this with an air compressor. Let's check a fan. Yeah, see, the fans aren't too terrible. I mean, they have dust on them, but... Yeah, let me go clean it and see what happens. All right, so I got majority of the dust out, but I found what I think is the root cause. The This aluminum shield is normally glued on the front of the uh, optic input. Kind of like this. It goes over that thing. This was loose, kind of floating around in there. As soon as I started hitting it with air, I saw it moving about. So that could have been throwing things off, making the color wheel drag maybe. Doesn't need to be there if the lamp is aligned right. I kind of think this will, you know, it's just a, it's a piece of foil. I think it'll cause more problems then it will good so I may make an executive decision of leaving that uninstalled so I got uh, all the loose dust out so now I'm gonna put the lamp back in and debating if I'm going to remove pull the uh, keyboard out or just, nah, we'll just lay it on top. The, uh, let's see. All right, so let's, let's see, I've got a door switch. We've got a door switch right here that needs to be bypassed. Let me just snug, snug these guys down. For testing, you don't really need them, but I want to make sure the lamp is aligned. And sometimes these will just kind of pull them into position. And then, let's see, will that, no. Just need something to hold it down. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to snap this back down. I've uh, cleaned out the cover, so let's just reconnect the keyboard. I don't know who made this particular chassis. Because it doesn't look like a more modern Optima. I know they were made by Cortronic and Delta. Not really sure. All right, so that's on, that's on. I'm going to set that back in place, give it a little. Because then we're going to close the lamp door so that that hits the switch. A little quarter turn on these guys to latch it. All right, so now we can test it. Go through VGA, the power. I feel better starting this up now that all that glass is out. Let me move you folks around so you can see the screen. All right, so power starting up. Lens covers open. Yeah, more dust coming out. Might have to get in there a little better. Pull the fans up. Probably do that when I clean it off. All right, we're getting a picture. Digital zoom projector. It's looking blue, not uh, magenta. So let's 
lifting up a little. There we go. Should. There we go. Oops, get that straight. So we do have a picture, but that is. That looks weird. It's like, oh, I see. Somebody's got the brightness cranked all the way up. Probably when he was trying to fix it. Let's reset. Let's see. It's on. Let's go back to image. Which way? This way. It's upside down. Alright, that looks better. Same thing, let's just put it all back to zero. I think this is an old Criminal Minds episode, so it's a little dark, unfortunately. But the uh, picture is definitely looking better. Let's see, color settings, that's all zero. Ooh, there's a reset, that's what I want to do. All right. So hopefully you can see that. There's no more magenta. That picture looks pretty normal. I, uh, I think we're in good shape here. Just want to make sure the uh, lamp timer is reset. Lamp settings. It's on bright mode. Okay, he did reset the timer. That's good. So we will leave that alone. stop. That brings us to this screen. Menu. There we go. So you can see it's a nice blue. Obviously the uh, lights are on above us so it's not super bright but um, we're in good shape. This, uh, this projector is good. I'm going to give it a, more of a physical cleaning. Clean some of that crud off it and uh, then we'll start putting the screws back in. can see how hot this got <clears throat> cracked right here all right
See, this stuff won't hurt anything, but it'll build up and possibly get pulled inside. So, get that clean. And that's relatively clean. And then, I'm just going to do the back. And the spray I'm using is just uh, anhydrous rubbing alcohol, isopropyl. It just gets any organic crud loose, and then it evaporates, which is nice. See what I mean? Any of that weird finger crud or debris. That's a melt mark. Alright. Close Mr. Lens. Let's put the top back on. See this this stuff's bugging me. I want to put the top back on, but I really don't want that stuff on there. Oh there it goes. Okay, it will come off. Alright, so I'm going to put the top on and then I'll clean that after it's all together because being solid, solidly assembled makes this a lot easier to clean that upper surface. So keyboard wire again, lock that, speaker. Alright, push it down until it clicks. I'm going to put this on. And put this on. Bring it in on an angle. And then uh, just kind of have to fight the door a little bit. It's not crazy, but it's annoying. And just clip, squeeze.
Now this, this insert was cracked, so I put my uh, clutch all the way down. are in. You can close the lid. And then these last two. And I'm going to go around and clean everything. Oh, turn that clutch back up a little. Yeah. for a moment. Get my paper towel ready. It's looking better. That's it. <laughs> so these weird little speckles on it. as good as that gets. Yeah, see that's like a burn mark. Oh, that's strange. Looks good. Let's fire it up again now that it's all closed up. Let's find something to pop the front up a little. There we go. Oops, wrong way. Hmm. No power. Missing. Did I not get that keyboard plugged in all the way? All right, so power lights. Looking good. Should settle on BGA in a moment with another kind of dark video. Yep. Oh, come on. There we go. See how cheap 
be anyway let's do stop get the brighter screen check the menu we have a good menu um, let me see if there's a test pattern sometimes these have test patterns it doesn't look like this one does yet let's see signal advanced let's check advanced logo capture exit that's not it That's fine, but this is good. I'm happy with this projector. I like when they end up being reasonable. Just had some debris in it. You know, just uh, that stuff was probably causing the problem as well as that little foil bit. That lamp is lined right, so we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to let it go. It's uh, it's good to go. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions about your Optima, or any projector really, put it in the comments. If uh, you need to know how to clean your TWR-1693, feel free to reference this video or my other one. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.